In this video, we'll talk about two things. First, how can you work with us about customizing your controller? And secondly, we would like to show you some really cool stuff about how ATEM switches can be used to make virtual studios. When you buy a Skarhoi controller, you really don't get a from the shelf product. You get a customized piece of hardware. Well, of course, we do have some standard models, you can say, which is fitted for most production needs that we are aware of, but you can always ask us to have customizations made. And that is not only in terms of the software in it, but you can also ask to have the hardware modified in certain ways. I would like to show you how we worked with the customer on customizing his particular product. And if you look at the screen behind me here, you can see uh, an example of what he sent to us. So basically, based on this piece of hardware, he said, okay, button number one right here, it must select video input number one, button number two, it selects input number two. He even provided a little bit of uh, context so we knew what he wanted to do with it. Button number three, so and so, etc. It uh, becomes really interesting if you look at button number six uh, to uh, ten. He wants to have the media player pool file number one selected, file number two selected, etc. So essentially he has a bus of buttons where you select plain inputs on the first five buttons and then he selects basically files from the media player on the last five buttons. So that's a really cool integration which couldn't be done in a single click with the ATEM um, control software. He also had some other needs. So let's go to the next slide and just look here. He has a button called stay tuned and the stay tuned button, it's uh, right here on the controller, it would put file number 10 from the media player pool on program and if possible it should turn the sound off. Then the button would be lighted red. If you press that button again it would keep file number 10 from the media player pool and program but it would now reactivate the sound and the light would turn green. And the light would go off when another source would be sent to program. So that's a really great functional description of what that button should do. Very easy for us to understand and program. And this is an example of how you can communicate to us about customizing your controller. Let's take a look at how the requests you saw on the slides just before has been implemented on the controller. So the controller is here, it's connected to the ATEM switcher through an Ethernet switch and we also have the ATEM software control here. So when I change stuff here, we'll see it reflected in the ATEM software control. All right. So the first thing is that I could select um, the preview bus by the first five buttons and if I press the next five buttons it will actually cycle through stills. And we can just quickly see when I press button number six it selects media player here but you will see that the action is really here in the still bank as I press through these buttons you see that um, the active still is changed. Although the stills is not uh, loaded into the ATEM switcher right here you still see the small green flag um, uh, cycling through the various still numbers. The really interesting feature was the uh, stay tuned button and the stay tuned button here should select media player number one to program. It should also mute the audio which is currently f at full uh, uh, zero dB on the master so that should be muted and secondly or thirdly we should select still number 10 in the media bank. Okay, so let's try and press the uh, stay tuned button. And we should now see media 10 selected. We should also see that media player one is on program. And finally, we should see that the audio is muted right there, which it is. And according to the description, the audio should go back to zero dB when we press the button again, which it does, but the source on program shouldn't change before we actually just change the source. So that would be done by selecting, let's say, camera 2 on preview bus and then press the transition button. One of the customer requests for this unit was that it could be used in the field and in the studio. And for their studio productions, they wanted to do virtual studios. That involves chroma keying and adding uh, virtual backgrounds behind the talents. So in order to make this controller that flexible, we added to the standard web interface a feature you see right here where they can select between a mobile and a studio profile by a selector box. So what we are going to do now is select studio and submit. Welcome to the virtual studio today starring Disney dolls and unusual chroma keying backgrounds like 
green and some kind of red. The point here is not to make a perfect keying course or anything. It is really to show a very powerful feature of the Skahoy controller and the ATEM library for Arduino. And that is we can change multiple settings in one data package. The consequence of that is that we can not only change uh, which source is being keyed, but also the keying parameters and the background media behind. So let's just take a look at what we have here. Two inputs from these two cameras. One of the doll over there, and this shot is from those two. They have different backgrounds, and we want to key them onto these backgrounds that we find in the media bank. We have two media players in the ATEM switcher, but we need to be able to accommodate to multiple backgrounds. So what we do is we use media player one, and we change which um, slide or still from the media bank that will be used as a background on media player one. So um, I'll now change to to program you on the big screen so you can see what's going to, to happen. Okay, so what I'll do now is to try and key this uh, source. First of all, I put Media Player 1 as the background, then I enable the upstream keyer, and then I configure upstream keyer 1 to uh, the chroma settings for that, so that I can, I go to camera 1. And uh, as you can see, I already have kind of hit the, the red color here. And then I just need to adjust some additional parameters a little bit until I have a reasonable keying. And I think this is as good as it gets. Again, this is not about having the perfect keying, but it is to illustrate that we are now filtering out the red background and instead showing the, the ferrotail forest in the background. Okay, so what we do now is we press a button on the Skahoy controller and that will store the settings on a button. Okay, so I press the record preset and I press this button and it now lights up red because it has recorded the chroma settings from the Kia. It has recorded the fact that we have um, upstream Kia number one on air. It has recorded media one being the program source and it also has recorded that we use still number one in media player one. All those things. So now we'll configure the second camera. I now go to the upstream key configuration, change to camera number two, and then I need to adjust parameters accordingly. So we see if we can find the, the green color. There we go. And it turns out many of the other settings are kind of very close to what, what they should be. So. Maybe I'll just change them a little bit for the purpose of illustration here. I could also change this a little bit. Okay, uh, that made it definitely worse, didn't it? Okay, but again, that's not the point here. The point is that I have now changed the keying parameters, but I will now also change which still is being used as a background. So I take now this still and put into media player one. So we have this background for these two girls and uh, I go back to the switcher here and what I do now on the Skahoy controller is with record preset being enabled, I press button number two. So now all these settings are stored on button number two. And then we could imagine having a, a third source like a computer input or something. That would be uh, color bars in this case. So we use color bars for fun and then we disable the upstream keyer and we say, okay, this is the third source without any keying going on and we now store that on button number three. And then I stop recording presets by pressing this button. So let's see if it works. When I press button number one, we should see one of the girls, this one on this background. Press button number two, we should see the other two girls in another background immediately. And button number three, you see the color bars. And if you look in the ATEM software control, you see the settings reflected. So what this controller is sending directly to the ATEM television studio will also be shown here in the interface as I press. So now I press button number one and you'll see the parameters change accordingly. Button number two, button number one, button number two. And you could even pull the power on this guy and bring it back and it will remember the settings that we had just a moment before. One of the things that we spent some time in engineering was how the timing of these settings should be. We have seen other solutions trying to do the same using the ATEM television studio or other ATEM switches as virtual studios. And one of the problems they experience is that the timing of setting parameters is, uh, is not exactly right and it's very difficult to control. But one of the consequences of our reverse engineered 
API is the fact that we can bundle commands and send them all at once and thereby improve the timing precision so that all parameters are changed at the same time. And now the controller is booted again, we can confirm that it has still the same settings stored in memory. As you can see, we can go between these and have a virtual studio session using an ATEM television studio with a single upstream Kia and a media bank.